Welcome, Zodiac. It's a collective read for whoever resonates. Doing a transit reading here, focusing on Capricorn and all of the plants that are in Capricorn right at the moment. And today on the 21st, which is the solstice, you have Capricorn, of course, at zero degrees. So everyone has Capricorn in our charts. That's in my fifth house. I have Saturn there myself. Um, so welcome Capricorn suns, if you're a sun Capricorn. Uh, but it affects us according to, uh, in astrology, how it aspects us by house and aspect to other planets and what uh, might be there. And this is a tarot representation with the sun card representing, of course, the sun here at zero degrees first. Mercury at 12 degrees. Now Capricorn getting up. The magician represents Mercury. Um, and I think just looking at the reading, you start to get an idea uh, how the cards can be insightful. Judgment is Pluto. And here is judgment right now. And very much conjunct the Empress, our, our Venus energy. So imagine now you have, let's see, <laughs> you have the Venus and uh, you have judgment here. And now you have the devil involved. So in terms of Capricorn, uh, the, the goat, you could say it's obsessive. It wants to climb. We also have as a Basically, it's a loose stellium. You have these energies in, in this concentrated in this one uh, sign. So it's a stellium to me. But you also have the midheaven here in natural chart because Capricorn is self-image. And, you know, public image, I mean. Uh, how we want to interact with the world. What do we want to do? Um, and with the devil, with the goat, is uh, typically with Capricorns, you know, uh, they're never going to stop learning. They're never going to stop uh, striving or trying, you know. Um, strong Capricorn archetype, you know, they're, it's uh, uh, retirement's an odd word probably for them, you know, um, that kind of energy. Uh, and we have D Pluto at 25 and Venus at 26, stationing a retrograde course. That's the big uh, elephant in the room right now. Really, it's the square to Saturn and Uranus. Uh, Mars right now is starting to make a nice sextile and Sag. It's the only planet kind of behind, quote unquote, uh, all this energy that's in Capricorn. Um, and uh, so when it makes that uh, uh, sextile to Saturn, exact, it's the 29th. 29th is, I think, the day that's I'm going through and looking ahead this week and um, kind of wanting to just jump to that. Um, because you have the exact square, third square of Saturn, Uranus. And I think with Mars being exactly sextile to Saturn, then or there's an opportunity. It, we're going to have to figure it out. Something we're going to have to do, but probably something doesn't come too hard to us in terms of affecting this energy, which is kind of the um, breaking down of this uh, whatever energy. For me, it's the sixth and ninth house here. Uh, how the Uranus Saturn square is hitting me with Uranus in my ninth house of Taurus as a Virgo rising. Um, and, you know, it's been uh, daily, all about daily routines and breaking down my belief systems, you know. And I would just say, like, in terms of belief systems, always don't always think about religion. Think about your personal belief systems that we don't even call normally belief systems. I'm not good enough, or I'm better than everyone else, or I don't need to listen to people, or I must always listen to people. Who am I to make a decision on my own? These are the beliefs, I think, that can be what's going on here, uh, particularly with Venus involved around love, relationships, feeling love, not feeling love, feeling seen, not feeling seen. This is a lot what's going on. Um, and it's it's just, you know, I think it's been an incredibly intense time. Uh, and I think a lot of that is coming. And you really see it here with the devil card um, in terms of uh, Pluto and Venus. I mean, you're putting Venus together with the devil and with judgment. And, you know, one thing about love, it's uh, uh, real love, right? I mean, it's not really judgmental. That's the one part of it's not judgmental. But we're being asked to be judgmental here about things at a very deep level and to look at uh, our desires, 
um, what we value or values. Empress also values. We have to look at that, not just look at in terms of love relationship, but in terms of like love relationship, what do we value? Um, it's like everybody being for a minute, a little bit of an Aries uh, Venus, where you really look at someone. I, I want someone that's for me, make is good for me. Um, and I'm not too worried like a Libra. Am I good for them? Am I the right match for them? Aries is like, hmm, are they, do they suit me? They give me everything I want. They might not even stop to think about. It's a little bit like this energy. And then on the 29th, you know, you also got uh, Mercury meets with Venus exactly in Pluto. So, um, and I think Mercury and Mars have been up to something. I've been talking about that for a while. So, um, making plans uh, here. Um, so in terms of what does that mean? We something we've been thinking about for a while all of us We're not just static being sitting here most of us <laughs> Like a, a puddle of mud, you know, we're all living our lives and things are going on and, and you bring this down into uh, Things that are going on in our life um, Yeah, it could be relationship stuff. Yeah, it could be just refocusing our attention on what, what are we interested in and in now uh, in terms of where are we putting our focus is it on reading something or it's on music are we focusing a lot on work are we kind of focusing a lot on uh, relationships this kind of thing and um, wherever we're focusing on it's going to bring that pluto energy of the shadow stuff the eighth house energy other people's energy um so it's like you can't help but kind of get other people involved and from now um you know, right up until the 29th, where I think that's where everything really hits with that square. Um, there's got to be some kind of building, but it gives us like a few days to really think about with Mars. I think what kind of impact can we personally make um, upon? Um, I think you kind of know with Venus, you can make a personal impact. You should. It's like, this are our values. You know, what's being challenged, what's being examined, what... You know, this is particularly hard, you know, if you're banging a lot of Libra, you know, archetype, you know, or even sometimes Leo can be like this, Leo moons, it, we really don't want to look at the shadow stuff, you just don't want to go there, like you're not the kind of person ever going to say, oh, I think I'll go to psychotherapy, not going to happen, you know, basically you don't want to go in the basement, you know, Scorpio's got to go in the basement. You know, they're just like, what's in the basement? I don't I'm, I'm not afraid to go down there. Well, fuck, I'm going to go down there right now and find out, you know. And but you're you're not like that. But it's kind of like you're being forced when it's conjunct Pluto. You know, versus on being taken to hell you know, against their will. So um, for all of us, though. So, um, and um, so I think that pretty much uh, lays it out a little bit, what's going on. And what matters with this is, is how is it hitting you? I mean... The, the Pluto uh, Venus is exact uh, semi-square to my natal sign. There's just a lot of stuff going on. So when I look at the transits, I do try to look at my own stuff. But again, Capricorns um, everywhere, guys. <laughs> it's uh, You can't get out of it. You know, it's the 10th house. You know, it's wherever Saturn is. Obviously, wherever Capricorn is. So... Um, now I have pre-shuffled, so let me just pull a personal card um, on each of the five cards we have. So the five of pentacles on the sun. Yeah. Um, and again, you kind of can't detach this from the Venus-Pluto energy. And five of pentacles is a lack mentality. Um, I mean, I think with this reading, I'm really not really focusing so much on the physical. I mean, this could be just not having enough uh, physically because it is pinnacles. But coming here on the sun, you know, I, I got it to be honest with you. It reminds me of, of me having Saturn in the fifth house. The fifth house is ruled by the sun, Lord of the sun. should be uh, where we shine, you know. When you have the five of pinnacles, you're not shining. It's like there's a bushel basket over your light, the biblical test, the... Uh, uh, text uh, don't uh, you know cover your candle with a bushel basket uh, kind of energy um, and that's where mercury should come in but uh, the sun's just catching up now and wanting to get serious and look what mercury you have uh, which is also uh, a sword energy to me you know it's uh, mostly representing gemini um 
four swords. Now we have some kind of healing. I think like as the sun uh, comes in, into the picture here, uh, deeper into Capricorn, um, begin to kind of like obsession energy. Um, what this would be like unconsciously is uh, really wanting to deal with this. I got to be honest, I'm a Sag. We had a lot of energy in Sag as this was forming, this conjunction was forming. And, you know, Sag, kind of like I said about Leo and Libra, we don't really want to deal with stuff. You know, we just kind of want to skip over Capricorn if possible, get, get on into Aquarius where things are interesting for us. So this is the nuts and bolts, the roots, the grounding, the money, the resources. And so when we get the sun into here, um, and this is our thoughts here, the magician, remember our thoughts and communication, um, we're going to be really focusing on this and some kind of healing. It could indicate to me that this month might not be a great month for like socializing and stuff, or at least not right now. I mean, I mean, we're pretty close to Christmas here. In fact, I got to get a package wrapped. I just remembered. Um, so it's the 21st. We only got four days. You know, even Christmas has got some more weirdness to it this year. You know, it comes with a twist. Uh, we'll get there. I'll, probably, uh, do, I'll definitely do a Christmas reading. So uh, Ace of Cups. Now, I really like this um, here. Uh, clarifying this judgment card this Pluto energy so here we go <laughs> um, definitely is about love and relationship here and let me just see I need to look at this along with the Empress card what's going on eight of cups god damn guys sorry to curse but holy fuck that's amazing I just got like chills okay this, I don't know this, I don't know if you could get a better combination right here so you've got the ace of cups with the eight of cups it's like uh you're really sorting out what your values are what really matters to you and what really doesn't at an emotional level this is everything i feel if we get this done at an emotion mentally we could say yeah you know i really don't like assholes and i really want a great person that really digs me <laughs> or whatever but this is really emotionally feeling like you know i'm done with all this stuff bullshit stuff you know just done with it but being open and ready now to receive love so it's not someone being bitter you know i was a little afraid with the five of pentacles and the four swords where this was going but you've been down in the past you've taken the hit you know the five of pentacles often comes up too i feel like you know we're not we're not perfect most of us and so when somebody kind of shits on us, a lot of times we go into five pentacles energy. It's like, wow, I want to be any good. They, I thought they really loved me. They said they did. And now they did. So it's almost like natural to take kind of go down on a knee when that hits you. Um, but here, uh, you're not bitter. You're, I love this. Like, you're moving on uh, into the future here. You know, because all of these transits end, you know, even the little ones eventually, you know. We might be dead and gone when they end, but they end. But this is a, a great ending to the reading. I like that, guys, a lot. So thank you. I'm trying to keep it down to the Capricorn here. And tomorrow, maybe try to bring in Aquarius a little more into the picture with the cards that represent uh, Saturn and uh, Jupiter and Aquarius, the star. So thank you guys. Please do let me know what you think. Comment. If, or if you have a question, go ahead. I'll try to answer it. Uh, a lot of matters specifically how things are hitting in your own uh, chart. You know, that's everything to me. So, uh, but you know uh, where things are at and you kind of have a picture of uh, maybe what's going on with this energy now. Um, and do please subscribe if you haven't. Trying to get to 1,000 so we can kick this off with a live reading. Maybe a daily reading. Kind of do some kind of transit reading every day. But well, we look at the transits and bring in um, also tarot to it, guys. Thank you.